I ran this video by a friend of mine, and she said, don't publish this. It's scary. People won't understand. I think people make too big of a deal out of mere theories. I don't seek agreement. I seek to inspire discussion, thought, out-of-box thinking. I could be an error, but at the very least, I am making an attempt at solving the puzzle. Okay, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. What is the millennium? According to the Bible, there will come a time when Jesus returns to earth to wage war against Satan. After that, Satan will be locked below earth and the kingdom of Christ will reign for 1,000 years. The millennium. After a thousand years, Satan will one more time be unleashed to the world and deceive all nations for a short time. After these strange days, we'll have the final judgment. Finally, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Christians differ on when these things will happen, but they are unanimously sure it's in the future. I am offering the theory that the millennium may have already happened and that we are already living in the short time of Satan's rule, the age of deception. Millennianism is based on Bible verses in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 1 to 10. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he would not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus, and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth, and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever. I drew up a random page from the internet for an overview of types of Christian beliefs on the millennium. They are dispensional premillennialism, historical premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism. I won't bore you with the details here. You can read those elsewhere. If we go by the book of Revelation, there is no more evidence for any of these theories than mine. All models assume the millennium is in the future, but that's an assumption. Once you drop that assumption, new doors of perception open. Sure, from the viewpoint of the author of the book of Revelation, the events described therein lie in the future. But why assume they still do? Let me share how I arrived at my ideas on what I'll call past millennialism. 1. Maranatha means the Lord has come. People around the world pray Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The Aramaic word Maranatha occurs only once in the Bible. It's translated as come Lord Jesus or come O Lord. But sticklers of linguistics have noted that Maranatha can also mean the Lord has come in the past tense. Some Bibles contain footnotes with the alternate translation. In the New Testament, Jesus' disciples ask him when he will return and he tells them soon. Of course, we don't know how soon soon is, but I doubt it's thousands of years. Two, our timeline has been faked to conceal the kingdom of Jesus. Recently, I posted videos about the faking of historical timelines. In the videos, I talk about how from the year 1000 onward, dates were given, for example, as J215, I500, 
J641, which refer to the year of Jesus or Yesus, 215, 500, 641, etc. Later, these were deceptively altered to look like 1215, 1500, 1641, etc. I contend that a non-existent 1,000 years were added to our timeline. This is why historians can barely figure out what happened in those first 1,000 years, but have much to say about what happened before and after. I took this photo on a recent tour of the Biltmore Estate, the largest mansion in the U.S. The museum officials register this as 1528, but it's really J528. 3. During the Middle Ages, the world was divided into kingdoms that ruled by divine right. This is easy to see on old maps, and I've shown this in the videos about the fake history of Africa and Gagamagog in northeastern Siberia, and many other videos. 4. Old maps show that there was a terrestrial paradise throughout our history. The video about the terrestrial paradise is the strongest piece of evidence for Jesus' kingdom on earth already having happened. Ancient maps show that the kingdom of Jesus was on earth. Jesus ruled from Jerusalem. That's why the ancient maps show Jesus' face either in Jerusalem or at the terrestrial paradise in the Far East, which in those days was the Far North. With this evidence in mind, let's now reread the relevant Bible verse. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. John calls him the dragon, the serpent, the devil, and Satan, so that there is no doubt as to the identity of the prisoner. In the video about trade with subterranean people in the Middle Ages, I provide documented evidence that at one point in our history, people tried to do business with them and the church attempted to seal the entrances to the subterranean. We have ancient sculptures, statues, and carvings of dragons and serpents. We have stories that they once roamed the earth and then they disappeared. Where to? If this Bible verse is true, it explains everything. They disappeared because they were locked into the abyss below earth. The verse continues, And he threw him into the abyss, and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he would not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were completed. After these things he must be released for a short time. The age of deception began around 1800, maybe a little earlier, 1776. Maps started changing. There was a worldwide bloodbath caused by revolutions. What were these revolutions? In school, we are taught that the peasants rose up against feudalism, against royalty, against oppression. We are taught that the royals were evil. But is that really true? The 1800s marked the end of rule by divine right, or according to my theory, the end of Jesus' 1,000-year kingdom. In the 1800s, we have mud floods, resets, empty cities, orphan trains, and all sorts of weirdness. History was being rewritten. Why? How? If this is the time Satan was set loose to deceive the nations, it all makes sense. The beautiful architecture built during the reign of Christ was being repurposed or claimed as newly built. Much of it was burnt down. Satan was building his kingdom. His architecture was inferior. The antenna-like spires quit harvesting free energy. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. I had assumed that this whole mark of the beast stuff was talking about the future. But could it have been events that happened long ago? Were not the apostles of Jesus Christ beheaded, shot, hung, etc.? Is this why, for a thousand years, royal families said they have a divine right to rule? The divine right to rule was not limited to Christian nations. The Chinese emperor ruled by decree from heaven. The first Japanese emperor is said to have been sent from heaven. African royalty, to this day, believe they still have the divine right to rule, despite the appearance of their countries being democracies. Is this, in fact, why we can trace kingdoms, royals, castles, etc. back about a thousand years? 
The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who is a part in the first resurrection. Over these the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Dead people who were resurrected after a thousand years. Sounds wild. Is this how the empty cities after the reset were repopulated? When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. And they came up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever. We've been in an almost constant state of war for the last 200 years. If the great deceiver is in fact ruling over us, it would explain why people are nowadays so confused they don't even know their own history. The British intelligence operative George Orwell, in a book written in 1948, said this, Every record has been destroyed or falsified, every book rewritten, every picture has been repainted, every statue and street building has been renamed, every date has been altered, and the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. There are plenty of signs that we live in an age of deception. We have fake news, fake history, fake science, fake food, fake medicine, all of which I've already discussed on at length. If past millennialism theory is true, then we're probably nearing the end of the short time. I ran this video by a friend of mine, and she said, don't publish this. It's scary. People won't understand. I think people make too big of a deal out of mere theories. I don't seek agreement. I seek to inspire discussion, thought, out-of-box thinking. I could be in error, but at the very least I am making an attempt at solving the puzzle. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.